But you're beginning to see why precisely then Jesus, John the Baptist, John the Baptist in Perea, Jesus in Galilee, the two parts of his territories, might resist him at that time. And we're beginning to see why people might be ready for that message. A double demonstration against Roman imperial power and conservative theological collaboration with it. He's going up to protest, in plain language, the collusion between the Roman governor Pilate and the Jewish high priest Caiaphas. These are interim ethics. They're interim ethics. And yes, they're radical as hell, and they will get you killed. It means that you throw yourself, as Schweitzer put it, on the wheel of history to try to move it forward in God's way. Bring the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The will of God being done on earth as it is in heaven. So you throw yourself, and this is the last page of Schweitzer. Got it. Almost makes me cry to think of it. He said, Jesus threw himself on the wheel of history, and it lunged back and crushed him. And he basically says, are you willing to take up those interim ethics? That this is dangerous business. He knows what happened to John the Baptist. It doesn't take divine foreknowledge or even prophetic insight to know I could get killed. We're beginning to see then, why did the Baptist movement of John, the kingdom movement of Jesus, happen precisely in the territories of Herod Antipas in the 20s? Because by 20, B, 20 CE, 20 of the first century, Tiberius is finally open for business as usual. And Romanization has finally hit Galilee. What we get in the Gospel of Mark is this extraordinary story of Jesus basically sort of arriving, coming out of the crowd in the River Jordan. From that moment on, everything changes for Jesus. He knows that he needs to do something. The New Testament records that he has this spiritual epiphany. But what's very clear is he's definitively casting his lot with John and with the movement. And that indeed marks the beginning of this revolutionary movement. The kingdom of God is near, repent, the time is at hand. We go back to our original sources. It's a twin movement. John inaugurates it. Jesus is baptized. He joins the movement. There's a joint baptizing period where they work together. And later, Christian theology loses this, and I hate it. I don't want Mary to fade. I don't want John the Baptist to fade. Among those born of women, there's none greater than John. And I think Jesus felt so deeply for his cousin, John. I think the grief was unbearable to just think how that man suffered. And he picked up the gauntlet and he carried it on until he himself was, of course, crucified. Thank you.